Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I'd like to talk about type hints and static typing in Python. Now, as you probably know, Python is a dynamically typed language, meaning that you never have to explicitly indicate what kind of types your variables have, right? It's just as, as, as soon as you assign a string value to a variable, that variable becomes a string. And as long as you don't do anything that you cannot do with strings with that variable, for example, as long as you don't try to perform a multiplication with it, then your script runs just fine. Right? So it's a very flexible, very as long as, ever, as long as there's no problem, there's no problem kind of uh, approach to typing. And uh, that's nice. I actually really like dynamic typing and it's one of the things that makes Python so user friendly. But in some cases, dynamic typing can lead to uh, very subtle bu bugs that are difficult to debug. And then in that case, uh, static typing or type hints maybe in, can be convenient. And this has been introduced as a new feature in Python 3.5. So uh, to illustrate this, let's take a look at this factorial function. So what we see here, just to, if you're not familiar with the factorial function, mathematically, the symbol is often an exclamation mark and it's defined simply by example. Three factorial is three times two times one is six. Two factorial is two times one is two. One factorial is one. And by convention, zero factorial is also one. And the factorial for negative numbers doesn't exist. So we define it as none here. Right? And you see how we've implemented that. For negative numbers, return num. For zero, return one. For everything else, we recursively define our factorial function by returning i times the factorial of i minus one. Now, this works. This is a valid implementation of factorial. So let's run it. Uh, print factorial three, for example. Now, if I run that, uh, Python three, six, type hints up, you see that it works. But uh, this is statically typed. And if we, for example, uh, accidentally pass the string three, we still have in principle a valid Python script. It's not syntactically invalid, but it is of course logically invalid because we're trying to now do mathematics with a string and we get an error message. And the error message actually comes already from here when we try to do a less than comparison with a string, which is not possible. Now, in this case, I think you will spot the bug quite, quite easily, but say that you have a more subtle, uh, subtle bug, such as we pass 3.01. So we pass the floating point number 3.01. This is also, also results in an error message, but it's quite a subtle one, right? We get, get a type error, unsupported operand types for multiplication, float and non-type. Now, where does that come from? Well, if you think about it, it comes from the fact that we start decrementing uh, our 3.01 until it actually becomes minus 0.99. And uh, then we return none. And then we try to multiply none with, a, with another floating point number that's not allowed. And we get this weird type error, but it's pretty subtle, right? And this is the kind of bugs that you can run into if with dynamically typed languages, because it's uh, because essentially we're just messing up the types here. Um, now, so how can we protect ourselves from these kinds of dynamic typing bugs? Well, as of Python 3.5, we can specify type hints in our code. And a type hint looks as follows. So i, our argument i, should be an integer. Um, and the return value of our factorial function is also an integer. That, that's it, that's our type hint. Now, these type hints, uh, as the name already suggests, are just hints and they're completely ignored by the Python interpreter. So if I run this piece of code again, we still get the same kind of obscure error message, right? So, so far we've essentially only used our type hint as documentation, but it doesn't do anything. But what we can do is now use a so-called static type checker, a separate kind of piece of software that analyzes our code and tries to detect whether we are actually violating our type hints or not. And the, the, most, most, uh, the best known type checker is MyPy and we can run it. You can simply pip install it, pip install MyPy. And then to run it, you simply call your Python interpreter. You specify uh, uh, dash M to indicate that we want to load a module. Which module? Well, MyPy. Uh, and then we run the code, that, the script that we want to check. Now, if I run this, it will not actually execute our script, but it will analyze it. And it will give us a, uh, an error. It says argument one to factorial has incompatible type float expected int. Uh, and that's correct, right? Because we have passed the float and it should be an int. So now we have a very clear error message um, and that makes it much easier for us to debug our code. 
And if I run it again now, so I change the change the, the argument to an int, now my pie is happy again and our code uh, and our code will run just fine. So that that is essentially uh, static type checking and type hints in Python 3.5. Now we can do more complicated things. We have, uh, we have uh, for example, say that we want to have a map function that operates on a list of integers. Now, what does map do? Map always, it's a kind of a common function from functional programming. It takes another function and a list, and it applies that function to each element of the list. So in this case, it would look something like this, right? So we use a list comprehension. Um, function applied to e, the element, what is e? Well, for e in L, right? So we loop, we loop through all the elements of the list, we apply the function to it, and we build a new function from that. Um, so then we can call this as follows. We can say, okay, map int list. What function are we going to apply? Let's say the factorial function. What are we going to apply the factorial function to? Well, say a list of zero, one, two, three, four. Now, if I run this, you will see that it works and it gives us a list of uh, factorialized integers. Now, this is kind of a complicated uh, function, right? Because there, it doesn't just accept integers, it accepts actually a function and a list of integers, which is how can we annotate that uh, using type hints? Well, we can say fnc is a callable. What is a callable? Well, a callable is an object that we have to import from the typing module. From typing import callable. Um, L is going to be a list and that too we have to import from the typing module. And the typing module is a new module introduced again in Python 3.5 for these type hints. Um, and then we can say, okay, FNC is a callable. L is a list, right, with the capital, so not, not the type list but the capitalized list uh, and a list of what? It's a list of integers, right? So we can be very specific in what kind of types we expect. What does our function return? Well, again, it returns a list of integers. Now, um, now I can run this. It doesn't change anything. I can apply mypy to analyze this code. It will be happy. But if I make a mistake here, for example, I pass 4.01 instead of, uh, so float, right? And we're not allowed to pass floats. Up, then we get in uh, mypy will tell us, okay, list item four has incompatible type float, right? So it's a very good way to debug our code. If I would run this code, uh, I would get pretty obscure error message, right? Pretty hard to debug. So the output of mypy is much more informative and much easier to use in debugging. And that's the whole point of the, these type hints and static type checking. Now, and we can do more complicated things, right? So for example, even dictionaries can be annotated in this way. So we can say, for example, map dict list or int dict that applies a function, again, a callable to all the values in a dictionary. Now, what is a dictionary? A D is a dict. What is a dict? Well, um, again, from the, from the typing module, dict. Uh, and then what is it a dict of? Well, the key can be anything, what, and the value has to be an int, right? So that's how we, that's the kind of dictionary that we expect. The key can be anything, we're not, not, not picky, but the value has to be an int because we're going to apply factorial to it. Uh, so what, where do we get any from? Again, from our typing module. Up. And then we say what we return is also dict any comma int. Now, and then how can we implement our map, map dict function? We can use a so-called dictionary expression, dictionary comprehension, uh, which are quite interesting. If you've never seen them, pay attention to the, to the, to the syntax, it's quite useful. What we do is we loop uh, through key comma value for, uh, 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 yeah, in, uh, for key value in d dot items, right? So we loop through all the key value pairs in our dictionary. And then what do we do with those? Well, we immediately create a new dictionary where the key is just the same, but the value becomes the value after applying the FNC. So this is a dictionary uh, dictionary expression. Um, right, so it's just uh, transform, applying FNC to all the, all the values in the dictionary in one uh, sweet and concise expression. 
let's apply this map indict. So now we don't have a list, but we have a dictionary. Say that we have zero uh, as a key. The key can be anything. Huh? Uh, and we have three as another key. And then we print this out. It will work. MyPy will be happy. Um, if we make a mistake here, for example, by making this into a, into a app. Okay, now. So you see that the type hints can be pretty, you can have pretty advanced type hints that really document your code quite well. Now say, um, one as a one final thing, say that here we have our factorial function and say that we, we are actually a little bit less picky and we also accept floats. And then what we simply do is if we have a float, we just say to, to capture the floats, we say if i is, uh, uh, I is float i. Um, <clears throat> How can we then indicate that we can that we accept both an integer and a float? Well, we can do that using the union. Again, an object that we have to import from the typing module. And then we say, okay, we accept the union of int and float. Um, and then we can say print factorial three, for example. Up is six. Uh, oh shit, I, I, I did it the other way around. Obviously this should be, uh, we're, we're not casting everything to a float, but casting everything to an int. So if I execute that three factorial is, is six. Now, if I run 3.01 factorial, it will simply be transformed into an integer and will give the same result. And also MyPy will now be happy, right? MyPy accepts this. Um, so if you want to ha have uh, function arguments that can be of multiple types, you can use the union. Now there's one thing that's a bit strange about, uh, about uh, type hints. And that's that none is always acceptable. So if I pass none, MyPy will be happy. Uh, because essentially, according to MyPy, every none is a subtype, it is compatible with every type. However, our code is not safe for none values, right? Because what we're trying to do then is, for example, here, cast a, cast a none to an int, and that's not allowed. So we have to say, okay, if e is none, return none, right? So we have to take into account that actually, uh, if we specify the type of a the type of a variable, then none is also an option. Uh, and that means in some cases that you nevertheless, that you still need to explicitly indicate, check your code manually as we've done here to, to capture occurrences of nones, right? Now that's essentially all there is to say about uh, type hints and static type checking in Python. So their type hints are just a way to document your code for uh, which types you expect for uh, our function arguments and return values. Type hints are ignored by the normal Python interpreter, but you can use them using a static type checker such as MyPy uh, to, off to do an offline check of your code, to basically do a linting as they call it of your code, to see if your code actually respects your own type hints. And that can be very useful for debugging purposes. Thank you very much for your attention.